Hello class, this is Introduction to Anthropology. This is the first lecture on primates. Um, when I say that you are a primate, I'm referring to a classification system created by Carl Linnaeus in the 1700s. In this system, Linnaeus used homologous structures to create his classification system. In this slide, I have an example of um, the classification system for wolves. In the next slide, we'll look at our classification system. Linnaeus created a system that can be used for every living thing on the planet. Um, each level includes the level above it, and levels get increasingly more specific from kingdom to species. So the top level is kingdom, and you see here that wolves belong to the kingdom Animalia. So do we, we're animals. We are not plants, we are not fungi, we are not bacteria. The second classification is chordata. And what that means is we have a spinal cord like the wolf, so we're in this group as well. The third is class, and that's mammalia or mammal. We are mammals, we are warm-blooded, we have hair, we give live birth. Um, and finally, order. Now, we are not carnivores, we are primates, so let's look at our classification system. Okay, compare our classification system with our closest relative, the chimpanzee. Again, we share a kingdom, we're both animals. We share a phylum, we're both chordata, we both have spinal cords. Um, we share a class, we're both mammals. And we share our order, primate. We're both primates. When we start to have differences is in family. Um, and the final two categories, genus and species, those are individual to us. So our genus is Homo, our species is sapien. We are Homo sapiens. Chimpanzees are pan okay, That is their genus and species. Every living organism has a two name, a genus and a species under this system. Your order is primate, your genus is homo, your species is sapien. You are homo sapien. Now let's look at primate evolutionary trends. First of all, primates have grasping hands, very flexible hands with opposable thumbs. They also have stereoscopic vision and color vision, nails and sensitive fingers instead of claws, a reduced snout, larger and more complex brain, increased parental investment, and they are social. Now look at the hands here. So flexible hands with opposable thumbs and grasping hands. On the left is a tarsier. You can see how both the hands and the feet have evolved to grasp onto tree branches. He's a very good climber, and he can also grasp onto insects and food. Um, on the right is a chimpanzee. And again, they have very flexible hands and can do fine hand movements. Now, on your right is a dog paw. Dogs do not have nails, they have claws. On the left is a human. We have nails and we have these fingers with sensitive pads. We are able to touch things and get information just by our sense of touch. Okay, let's look at our vision. On the left is a rabbit. Very little of their vision is stereoscopic. Now stereoscopic means that it's 3D. Um, so we see things in depth perception. Um, on the right is a monkey, and most of the monkey's field of vision is stereoscopic. They see it in 3D, and in addition to that, uh, primates see better color than most other animals. We see great color, as do most of the apes. Now, we have a reduced snout and reduced sense of smell. Um, your dog has a very good sense of smell, and a large portion of their brain is dedicated towards that sense of smell. We have small noses. They get in the way of our eyesight, and our eyesight is important for primates. 
and very little of our brain is dedicated to our sense of smell. Now we have a larger and more complex brain. Uh, this slide, I want to warn you, is not to size. Um, I wish it were. This is the human brain is a very large and it also has a lot of folds and it's very complex. And primates in general have a more um, complex brain and a larger complex brain. Now increased parental investment, we have one or two offspring, we do not have litters, and we invest a lot of time and care into our babies, bringing them up oftentimes for years and years. Um, this right here is a chimpanzee family. It is Flo, one of the chimps that Goodall studied. She was a very good mother and had many successful children. Now chimps can spend years with their mother and even when they're adults, they recognize their mother and come back um, to the family unit to visit. Social behavior is a primary characteristic of all primates. Primates need to interact with other primates. It is how our brain is formed, um, and um, it is a very important part of our health. Okay, let's start looking at what I'm calling the four groups of primates. Um, prosimians, New World monkeys, Old World monkeys, and apes. Now, many primatologists consider the tarsiers a fifth group. Um, I just want to focus this discussion on the four groups. This slide shows you two different types of prosimians. On your left is uh, Loris. It is a Galeco. Um, they live in Africa, Southern India, and Southeast Asia. On your right is a lemur from Madagascar. It shows you where the two different groups of prosimians li live. On the left are the lemurs. They live in a large island off the coast of Africa called Madagascar. On the right are the lorises. They live in Africa, Southern India, and Southeast Asia. Now here's an example of a lemur from Madagascar. Um, lemurs are vertical clingers and leapers. Um, note the long back legs. I will have a YouTube available for you on Blackboard, and you can watch these amazing animals move. There are many varieties of lemurs in Madagascar. This is the other type of prosimians called lorises. Again, they live in Africa, India, and Southeast Asia. Um, this is a picture of a slow loris, and like the name, they move very slowly. But also, please note the eyes. The eyes indicate a nocturnal um, adaptation, and by nocturnal, we mean night active. The Galago or bush baby, like the slow loris, is also nocturnal or night active. So they sleep during the day in little nests, and then at night they come out and hunt for insects uh, through the forest. This helps them avoid some of the predators that live in the forest that would eat them. Okay, now let's look at New World monkeys. Characteristics of New World monkeys. New World monkeys live in South America and Central America. All of them are diurnal or day active. So they sleep at night and are active in the day. All of them live in trees. That's called arboreal, when you live primarily in the trees. All New World monkeys have tails. Some have prehensile tails. And their fat faces are flatter and their nostrils flare outward. So here you can see two examples of New World monkeys. If you look at the nose, you can see how the noses flare out. Um, they come in many different sizes and shapes. Um, on the left is Yukari monkey with a red head. Um, monkeys see color well and oftentimes communicate things through the colors on their bodies. He's telling us that he's a very healthy individual with that bright red head. 
All of the New World monkeys have tails, but some have prehensile tails. Prehensile tails have fine musculature and can be used to manipulate objects or as a fifth limb for holding onto branches.